Welcome back everyone today. It's a really exciting day. We're going to be racking our uh, wild grape ice wine. As you guys recall, uh, it was probably a couple videos ago, a few videos ago, I had started this uh, ice wine from wild harvested grapes that were harvested at a temperature of around minus 15 Celsius that have been on the vine for a while. So uh, we're exciting today. Let's just take a look at how we're doing. This is almost about two weeks out use my flashlight here and show you guys sort of uh, the sediment that we're trying to separate out. So there is a sediment at the bottom, uh, it's kind of dead yeast in there. And uh, you can see here, there's a wine, it'll clarify over time. You can see the bubbles of the fermentation on top, the carbon dioxide. I don't know if you can see, but uh, everything's really slowed down in there. Not a whole lot of active bubbling happening. So it is definitely time to rack this wine. So I'm just gonna remove the airlock here and we'll have a look. Oh yeah, look at all those bubbles. Woo. Look at all those bubbles in there and it smells extremely strong of alcohol. Very much like wine. So you can see there's a few little bubbles going on there. Um, markedly slowed down from before. So the next step of the fermentation, um, about 30% of the fermentation will occur. Most has already occurred in the first first week really. So we'll get to racking the wine in just a minute and I'll show you how to do that. Today we'll also do something really exciting. Let's take a look. In addition, today we're going to be making some medicine, some wild medicine. Uh, we'll be using Usnea, which is the um, old man's beard lichen. I collected in one of my last videos there. And we're going to be making a tincture. So uh, stay tuned for that. So what I have here is a small, um, small jar here, the small little jug. And what we're going to do is use a turkey baster that I have uh, sanitized with star sand. What I'm going to do is uh, just siphon off the wine. I'm going to go through the top here. I'm just going to sort of siphon from the middle with the clearest wine I can get. Whoa. <laughs> and we're trying not to lose it. And we're just going to pour the wine in the jug. I do not want to touch the sediment at the bottom or bring it in. I mean, certainly if an accident happens, uh, I can... Uh, you know, we can kind of rack it again. Ooh, that smells very much like wine. It smells great, actually. I'm just going to stabilize it here with my hand. So I mentioned star sand. That's not toxic to you. Um, and it's not, it uh, doesn't put any off flavors in uh, your, your wine or your brews. It just sanitizes equipment for you. So you always want to have a very clean um, environment. You're doing this because you do not want to introduce anything that you don't want to get in there. It might alter the flavor of everything. You don't want that. So the wine will clarify over time. It's going to go through the secondary fermentation process for a couple more weeks or so. So another fancy name for the sediment that you're seeing after your primary fermentation is called the lees. And of course it's all the little, little dead yeasties in there. Some people have siphons to do this. This is just a really cheap and easy way of doing it. All right, so I have as much as I dare take off here without making it too cloudy. I wanna make sure I've got as much of the leaves off as I can. Um, so this is a perfect size uh, for my micro batch here. So the secondary fermentation process is done primarily without oxygen. So what we wanna do is put our, uh, our airlock back in there. So for this one, I've got like a little stopper here and uh, you know you can go back and use, like I use this one uh, in my last setup there. Uh, I realized I dropped it and there's a bit of a crack in it, so we're not gonna be using that one today. Uh, I'm just gonna use this one right here. This is like a, a similar idea. Um, sanitize that with a little bit of star sand already. Used it a long time ago. Um, so we're just gonna pop that in here and we're just gonna use a little bit of uh, vodka um, just to fill it up to the maximum line here. So that uh, during the secondary fermentation process, when more of the carbon dioxide is produced, uh, it'll uh, be able to escape, but uh, no bacteria or yeast or other things will be allowed to get into uh, our wine. 
So I just use a little bit of the spiritus vodka here, Polish vodka. Just put a little bit in here, try not to spill it. So we need some for our uh, tincture we're gonna make in just a minute. So there we go. All right. So that's all good. Now we just install the little lid on here. So you don't get any like fruit flies uh, in the vodka. And then we leave this for another two to three weeks. Stay tuned. There's a close up of the secondary fermentation process happening. Uh, so when you see a little bubble escape um, through the airlock here, that is the carbon dioxide that uh, the remaining yeasts that are still alive, they're doing their fermentation job. So they're still producing a little bit of alcohol. I mean, obviously not as much as in the primary fermentation process, but uh, so they're producing alcohol and they're also producing the carbon dioxide. So you see those little bubbles go up the column here and that's what that is. And here goes one right now. One idea I have for you guys is just to put um, a date on any of your fermentations, just so you know, um, you know, when you have to do something next with your project so uh, that you don't forget about it. So I put a little bit of tape on here just so that I remember when to um, do the next step. I'm going to try a little bit of the wine. Uh, you can try it at any part in the process just to see how you like the flavor. So I've just got a little bit here in my um, mason jar. I'm going to try a little bit on the spoon here. All right, there it is. Let's give it a whirl. Oops. Ooh, that is good. Mmm, you can taste the alcohol in there for sure. And it's really sweet, just like what we want. We want this ice wine to be extremely sweet because that's what it is. It's like these grapes that have been on the vine for a long period of time. And uh, so they get really, really sweet. There's lots of sugar in there. So uh, when we do this secondary fermentation process, we're only going to let it go about three weeks. It, you know, if you let things go on and on and on before stopping the fermentation, you end up with more of a dry wine, I find. So um, yeah, this is going to be really good. Now on to our next project of the day, and that's to make a tincture from Old Man's Beard. Old Man's Beard is a lichen, which is an organism that is made up of uh, fungus and algae, and it grows off of trees. You guys will notice uh, one of my previous videos, I harvested this, and it's now uh, nice and dried. So what I'm going to do is make a tincture, um, which is basically, uh, you know, extracting the medicinal properties from the old man's beard using uh, high proof alcohol. So I'm going to kind of do it the folk herbal remedy way, which is uh, not as involved as say doing, um, you know, an extraction using heat methods and things like that. So what we're going to do today is uh, take this old man's beard and I'm going to grind it up in uh, my mortar and my pestle here to uh, kind of crush it and uh, get the maximum extraction possible. And then I will use uh, my favorite uh, alcohol for making um, tinctures. Uh, it's called Spiritus. It is 76% uh, vodka from Poland. And this is basically, for those of you who don't know, it's 150 proof alcohol. So, so you don't really want to be drinking this stuff. It's pretty strong. Um, and you may be asking yourself, what is a tincture of uh, old man's beard? You know, why is that important? And well, uh, old man's beard has been known for a long time to have many medicinal properties. Uh, it has purported antibacterial, antifungal, and anti-inflammatory properties. Uh, I've heard of some amazing uh, healing that's happened uh, for wounds, for example, using um, old man's beard. And tincture can be taken, because um, it'll be a bit strong, obviously. You can take it in a bit of tea or juice or something like that. Um, to kind of mute the taste a little bit, but it can be used, um, you know, according to your uh, local um, naturopathic doctor uh, to help with various concerns, uh, you know, infections and fungal infections, bacterial infections, and, uh, you know, for inflammatory conditions. But I'll leave that to you guys to research that and talk to your naturopathic doctor about that. So what we're going to do now, I'm just going to take my old man's beer, I'm going to pop it here in my mortar and pestle which uh, you can get, you know, these online or from your local health food store. Uh, just to kind of grind this up a little bit. Might just take off a few little pieces of bark I found here and there on there. But trust me, the 150 proof alcohol will get rid of any of the nasties on there that you might be worried about. This is um, really beautiful old man's beard from beautiful pristine boreal forest, so I'm not too worried. But you may not want a chunk of bark in there might create like an off taste, for example. All right, so we have that in there. 
you know, the eosinic acid uh, that's in the old man's beard has been shown uh, to have activity against uh, strep bacteria and staph skin bacteria. So uh, really helpful for those kind of infections. I'm just gonna kind of mush it up a bit in here, break down the fibers. You just see, you just kind of mash it in here. And I take a little bit of time, it is tough. You even use like scissors or things like that to kind of cut it up. If there's anything you can do to kind of break it up a little bit, it's helpful. So I've kind of mushed it up and broken it up a little bit just to kind of expose all the little, the little fibrils there a bit. So now let's put that in our jar. Just pop it in here. A little powder in there. Okay, great. Now here's the easy part for this method. All you need to do is pour your vodka on top. It's covered. All right, so just till it's covered there. Awesome. It's a really easy way of doing this. I know there's a little bit of a pine needle that floated up. I'm going to get rid of that. Any other little things that float up, you most certainly can kind of skim them off, like little pieces of bark or something like that. All right, I'm going to get my lid and we're going to shake this up. All right, so we'll just give it a good little shake there, make sure it's all mixed up and covered. You know, nothing's going to grow on this. This is 150 proof alcohol. Uh, but what it's going to do is going to extract all medicinal properties. So you can leave this in a uh, darker, cool area for about six weeks. Uh, and you can just give it a good shake every few days or so just to kind of mix everything around. If you forget, not a huge deal. And then in six weeks, what you do, very straightforward, you just strain out everything. Uh, you're going to keep the alcohol, uh, which is, contains your tincture um, of the old man's beard, and put it into amber dropper bottles and you can use it for your tincture, for your health. So isn't that cool? Super easy um, woodland medicine. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know I enjoyed making it for you. Um, stay tuned, we'll let you know how the, uh, the grape uh, ice wine works out. I'm really excited about it. Oh, you can see the fermentation going on right now. Little bubbles of air kind of coming up and escaping from the bottle. So we've got a, still a very active fermentation process going on. Um, but very soon that'll slow down and we'll be ready to, uh, to age this um, wild ice wine. I'm really excited about it. Well, I hope you guys have a great week as always. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to leave them down below in the comments. Take care. See you in the next video.